Hey, anyone who's watching, I am just about ready to start drawing. I'm just trying to get Facebook set up. As always. Come on, Zuckerberg. Man, I'll tell you, I cannot figure out how to stream to Facebook at the same time. I'd really love to do that, but it's just not, it's not going to happen today either. Darn it. Well, that's a bummer. All right. Well, uh, okay. So today I'm going to be doing something different than what I typically do. Um, I'm going to be starting this uh, t-shirt design completely from the sketch stage. So this is a new t-shirt design that I'm working on for a client. And right now it's just nothing but scribbles. Um, it's for a, for a guy that host a, a gun club out west and every year they do a t-shirt and it's usually a really fun theme like zombies or um, monsters or uh, last year we did the four horsemen of the apocalypse so that's always a good time um, this time he wanted to theme it around uh, Baja Mexico so we he wanted me to draw a chucacabra which I may not be saying right um, but I'm excited about that. So my, the first step that I do when I'm setting up a t-shirt is uh, to do the text because often what will happen if I don't do the text first is I will just get crazy with the illustration and realize that I left no room for the text. And then you have to cram it in and it ends up looking crammed in, right? So I set this text up in Photoshop because... Um, Manga Studio is a great program, but uh, it does have text editing capabilities, but there are a couple things that Photoshop handles a little better, so I usually stick with text there. Um, save it as a PSD and open it up uh, in Manga Studio 5. Uh, the very first step after that, when I start drawing, is I like to just kind of like extremely quickly block in a composition sketch and most likely you guys are looking at this and you have no idea what you're looking at um, I have a tiny bit of an idea what I'm looking at and that's exactly what I want I just want to lay down basic shapes we're gonna have a the zombie hero here is gonna be wearing a sombrero he's an outlaw hero type 
and he's here's his shoulder he's gonna have a bandolier and holding a pistol and then in the background here will be an angry chupacabra who has just captured his uh his girlfriend like uh, I think I want to draw like a Mexican bride here and she's she's screaming and screaming for zombie uh, let's call him Pedro here to save the day and then maybe a couple other chupacabras like flying in the sky and a little bit of a desert in the background and for the frame I'm gonna do all kinds of cool like Mexican styled uh, traditional Mexican designs things you would find on on mats and rugs um, the the final t-shirt is only going to be printed in I think three colors maybe even just two uh, I'll have to check my notes so that poses some challenges that means that I've got to let all of the, I got to let the line art do most of the work because I'm not going to be able to really add highlights I'm not going to be able to differentiate differentiate shapes with different colors um, so it's going to be very challenging, but uh, it can also it can also save some time. You sometimes you're able to get the uh, the design done quicker. So let me start. Let me get my pencil out. And uh, if you're watching for the first time, um, anybody who has any questions at all. Just please go ahead and put them in in the uh, in Twitch comments or YouTube comments, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. Uh, just one second, then. All right, let's get started. So I'm going to be using some pencil brushes here. I'm going to turn that way down so I can draw over top. I used to draw in blue a lot, but uh, I ended up, now what I do is I just draw in black, and then if I need to do kind of a draw over, then I will just drop the layer down and then um, change it to blue. And uh, when I start drawing, I like to use this digital pencil brush that I have that is like a very soft, thick line. Um, because right at the beginning, I don't want to, I don't want to actually commit to any details. I just want to put in the basic shapes and like the attitude of the characters and stuff. Hey Tammy, thanks for watching. Uh, Tammy, you may have missed in the intro here. What I'm doing today is uh, starting a new design from the bottom up. So I'm not inking today, I'm just drawing the very first sketch. Um, and 
this sketch will be pretty loose because I want to send it to my client before I get too far into things uh, and get their approval um, before I commit too much time to it. So for this kind of stuff, we I usually spend about uh, like an hour, 45 minutes or something like that. So I'm going to, um, I want him to have a sweet mustache. Hey, uh, Desiree, uh, asking, how did I learn how to draw? Um, that's a good question. Basically, uh, I would say most of what I learned started with my first job. Um, uh, I got a job working at a motorcycle graphics place uh, right out of school. Um, I did take a lot of art classes in college uh, and uh, I learned a lot in high school of course too but I would say I really didn't start getting any good um, until that first job. Uh, I had a really supportive high school art teacher and um, in college I ended up taking more of a advertising uh, my degree is in communications and advertising so um, I didn't really learn a whole lot in college about drawing unfortunately um, after that I spent a lot of time um, on the job learning and then watching YouTube videos watching uh, tutorial videos things like that uh, YouTube was really new when I first started so um, a lot of the tutorials I watched I uh, had to buy. Um, sometimes they're a lot better that way actually though. Uh, so Tammy, um, Tammy asks, how many sketch versions do you usually make before inking? Uh, so that totally depends on what I'm doing. If I'm doing a logo, then typically I start, I do three different um, sketch versions, like three very different ideas. And then, then I'll send those to the client and get their feedback. When I'm doing a t-shirt like this, where the client and I already have a pretty decent understanding of what this is going to be, um, then I only do one. Uh, I will... It, the reason I only do one is that um, it can end up confusing the client uh, or what typically happens is that you'll send it them the, uh, the three drawings or whatever and they'll like a couple things about each one and then we'll end up with, then they'll want to cram all the things into one design and that makes it really convoluted and weird. Um, so I try to avoid that if I can. But with logos and conceptual things like mascots, you definitely have to send two, like two or three sketches to start um, because you don't want to you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket on the first try, you know. All right, so there's gonna be a big chukacabra back here in the background. They're kind of weird. I've never drawn one before, but they kind of look like like a wolf bat. Really weird. And right now what I'm trying to do is, is keep everything extremely loose so that I don't I'm not really committing to anything yet. You know, I'm still trying to explore And they have these little wings, little bat wings.
Hey, uh, to answer uh, flavored, fl flavored genuine, what is the best thing you like about Clip Studio Paint? Um, I have a YouTube video that describes, I think, like 10 or 20 things that I think it, the program does better than Photoshop. Uh, you might want to check that out if you're new to the program. Um, what I think probably the one thing that I get the most use out of uh, are the uh, the symmetrical, the symmetry rulers, where you can throw a ruler down. Actually, I have one right now. So you throw it down, and whatever you draw on one side appears on the other. Um, I use those all the time. Uh, they're really handy for t-shirt designs, especially because often you're doing symmetrical things or things need to, to balance out really nicely. So if I had to choose one, that would probably be it. So I'm going to, in the background, I'm going to have like this zombie, or not zombie, but a, uh, a beautiful Mexican bride. Her ceremony has been interrupted by this giant chucacabra. I guess they're not supposed to be giant, are they? But uh, we'll take a little liberty here. And she's calling out to her zombie hero guy. And then up here, we'll draw another one in the sky, flying around. Now, this sketch I'm working on at the moment is not something I would send to the client because it's, it's just a mess. There's nothing to really see here yet. Uh, Tammy asks, do you separate each piece when you ink, or do you do all of it on one layer? Uh, that's, that's a really good question. When I ink, um, it also depends on what it is, but generally when I'm inking, I like to draw on a foreground, middle ground, and background. And I'll separate those onto three layers, because often what I'll do is change the color of the line art um, in the far background to make it recede. All right, so I'm going to draw a frame here using the symmetry brush. And right now, elements like this, like this frame, I'm sketching this on a different layer because I know that I'm going to keep this. I'm not going to be re-sketching this. Um, it's a little easier to commit to things like this, so I want to keep it separated for now. And this will be like a beaded rug. Hey, uh, Dutch Doodles. I love saying these names. I think there's a good chance that I'm going to be in Chicago uh, in a few weeks, like for some Halloween. It's called Nightmare on Chicago Street some big Halloween festival. Um, they hired me to, to illustrate the uh, poster um, and then they were generous enough to ask me or to give me a table if I wanted to come down and sell stuff. Um, and I think I'm definitely going to take them up on that because I've never been to Chicago and always wanted to, to check it out. So right now I've got some like Mexican reference open. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to replicate these patterns. I just want to draw enough of them to give my client the idea 
of what's happening right there, you know. Hey, what's up, Kellen? Thanks a lot for uh, for all the work you've been throwing me. Um, I can't wait to see the t-shirts. Uh, it looks like I missed some questions here. Um, so Rob Wentz asks, uh, I plopped in the live stream link on the Facebook post for those having trouble finding the stream. Yeah, you know, I know it seems silly to to tell people on Facebook to come watch my stream and then I don't show a link to where they can get it. But the the reason I do that is Facebook, uh, they do anything they can to keep you from leaving Facebook. So if you post a link in a um, in a post, then Facebook is less likely to show it to other people. So on my Facebook fade page, for example, um, I've got, I have like 11 and a half thousand people following my page. But when, if I posted, hey guys, check out this link, um, Facebook might show it to like 200 people, maybe. Um, it really sucks. And uh, they're notorious for doing that. And it's gotten worse and worse because they want you to buy their advertising. So... Unfortunately, uh, I just try to say, hey, you know, I, I'm live on my YouTube channel, and I don't provide a link. I'm just hoping that people will be able to, to find me. But, uh, but I appreciate you putting the link in the comments. Maybe that will um, be the best of both worlds, you know. Uh, Josh Smith. Um, Sorry if I already asked, but at what stage might you show a client to see if they're liking where it's heading? So I'm going to be drawing this for about an hour, and w when I'm finished, that will be the sketch that I'm going to be showing them. Um, normally, my first stage sketches, I put about an hour into them, and uh, you'll see it when we're done here. It'll be, it'll still be pretty rough. Um, and I try to stress to the, my clients when I show them the sketch that like what you're looking at is only for layout and composition, right? The details are going to come later, but we, you and I just have to decide what's going to go here, what's going to go there. Um, and I learned that lesson the hard way, as, as many of you guys probably have, when you, you spend a lot of time on something um, and... You know, like if I spent a lot of time on the zombie and they said, oh, we'd love it, but can you make him, uh, you know, I don't know, a girl or, you know, can you make him like facing us instead of sideways? Well, in their mind, they think all I got to do is just like hit a couple buttons and I can turn the zombie facing us, but we all know that's not true. You have to totally redraw it. So... That's why in these early stages, I try to keep it really, really uh, loose. All right, so now, now that's done, um, take this sketch. And now we can start doing some of the fun stuff. Hey, Gerald, I didn't recognize... I didn't recognize your real name. Um, yeah, I am still having trouble with Facebook. I don't get it. I might have to call the uh, the tech people. Follow the directions and everything, but uh, it's just not happening. It really does stink that they Facebook makes it so difficult. Um, Facebook does not let you... They really don't want you to stream... To multiple channels at the same time so they end up you, you have to do some kind of workaround uh, in most cases you have to pay for this workaround and that's what I've been trying to do but I haven't been able to figure it out so 
eventually I'd really like to stream to Facebook at the same time because I know a lot of people follow me on there and uh, yeah there you go So right now I'm using a brush that I created uh, called Just Rough Pencil, and it's kind of like a combination of a big fat ink brush with a little pencil texture to it, um, and it's it's really handy at this stage because again I'm trying to keep it soft and and loose and just feel things out. It's crazy. I remember thinking like three years ago uh, that zombies were going to die out eventually and still hasn't happened, fortunately for me. Hey, uh, to answer Greg, do you do any thumbnails? And if so, how many do you do before committing to one? Um, someone actually asked this question earlier, and it, my answer was it really depends on what I'm doing. So if I'm doing uh, logo design, then I will definitely do uh, like three, three or four thumbnails and uh, send those to the client. Um, sometimes I'll do more and just send like the best three. Uh, for this job, we already had a pretty good idea of what this was going to be. Um, the composition was all up to me. Uh, the client just wanted like a, a, ba a Mexican uh, bandito zombie and, uh, and a chupacabra. So he actually, his vision was a little nuts. Like it was... He wanted an army of chupacabras trashing a uh, Mexican wedding and like zombies fighting them and stuff. Um, but this is going to just be a one color t-shirt design. And with t-shirt design, there's clients often have like, they have this knee jerk reaction to try to cram as much stuff in the design as possible. But a really good t-shirt design has, uh, is legible at a really small size so like if you walk away from it you want to still if you stand back by, by 10 feet like you still want to see understand what's happening in that t-shirt um, it'll sell a lot better uh, when it's on you know because when it's on the internet it's really just like two inches tall um, uh, and really any composition Two, I really like to have something in the far foreground and then mid-ground, background. It's just a, just a rule that you learn in, in art skill. Sorry, I'm, like, I'm exhausted today. did not sleep well. Um, 
but anyway, so thumbnails. So with this, uh, because the client and I are, worked a lot together and uh, he trusts me and I trust him to not go nuts, um, I'm only going to do one sketch, but I'll just put a lot more time into it than I normally do. Um, if somebody asks me for three sketches for a t-shirt, uh, I'll gladly do it, but uh, definitely I would not spend nearly as much time. Um, and in fact, I learned in those situations, it's best to almost draw like a step up from stick figures. You know, you don't want to, um, the more you leave to the client's imagination at the beginning stage, the better, because to them, they project what they want to see onto it. Uh, and, um, it's usually a good thing. Not always. I mean, there's, there's definitely times where I can submit several thumbnails and then uh, a client will not like any of them or, and, and what's worse is not like them, but then not really have any idea on how to fix it. And that's bad, bad news. So a lot of times when I'm drawing something, um, something technical like this, this gun, uh, I might get a photo of a gun and then trace it, trace the general shape of it just so I can get the proportions right. Um, but this time, I didn't think that would be very impressive on a live stream. So I'm just I'm looking at a photo of one and uh, penciling it in. Once I do send this sketch to him and if he approves the sketch, I probably will get the photo and kind of lay it on top just to make sure I have the proportions right. Because looking at this now, I, I know that I do not. Hey, Rob. Um, yeah, you know, I did all that. Uh, oh, I did not do that. So you're saying you need to change your keyframe interval in OBS to 2. Currently, you have it set to eight. So, I did the other thing you're saying, but I did not do that. Uh, no idea what the keyframe thing is, but I'll do that for next time. I'm guessing I can't do it now. All right, and then this will be like a nice gnarled zombie hand. Anyway, I was talking about Chicago. Anybody who watches this, if you're from Chicago, uh, I, I probably will be at the Nightmare on Chicago Street October 21st. Uh, it would be cool to, to see you and say hi. <clears throat> All right, so then what I'll do... I can for now get rid of that blue line and I just like to take the soft eraser and just sort of back out everything I just did because now I've got the whole point of that was just to get the proportions going uh, correctly uh, Tammy asks have I ever tried animating in Clip Studio um, I have not uh, I saw that they recently, or like last year, introduced that, so I, I definitely want to give it a shot. I've done it in Photoshop, um, and I don't think there's much of a difference, so yeah, I definitely want to try that out. Have you? Does it look, uh, does it seem easy? Is it effective? I would think one of the cool things about it is that you can work with vector layers in Manga Studio. So you could draw something and then use the, the warp tool 
and move, you know, move things around that way. Um, and it, they won't get warped, so, or I mean, they would get warped, but not degraded. Kind of like using, like doing an old flash animation. Yeah, I'll, if I can figure out the animation, uh, then I'll, I'll definitely do a live stream or that might be better as a tutorial actually. But I gotta figure it out first because I don't I don't know anything about it. That would be a pretty embarrassing live stream. Uh, whoopty freaking news asking me if I'm going to participate in Inktober this year. You know, uh, I thought I was, but I'm looking at my schedule recently and like, I just don't think, I, unfortunately, I don't think I can. Uh, I recently started a personal project, um, that I'm excited about. I don't want to talk about it much yet, but it's going to take up like all of the free time I have, which is which is not a lot. So I think, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to skip it this year, um, which is disappointing because it's uh, it's a lot of fun and I think it's rewarding too because it seems like it got a lot of great feedback from people. Uh, people love to see on social media and Instagram especially, like they love to see drawings. Uh, there's something about digital art that's just not as attractive. It's just like ink on paper, you know. So anyone listening, if you have not tried Inktober, you don't know what it is, and you want to get better at inking or drawing, um, look into it and definitely try it out. It's a great, uh, it's a really fun challenge. Now here, I am uh, already getting like way too involved in this sketch, you know, because I got to keep in mind that this is the very first sketch. If for some reason the client did not like this, then uh, that would be a lot of time wasted and I can't really afford that. Um, like I said, we worked together before and I, we, we kind of trust each other to, he gives me a lot of freedom, so I'm not real worried about it, but let me... Let me move on a bit. The idea here is really just to give them enough information to communicate my idea. And then what will happen after I get uh, his approval is I will come back and, and turn these lines blue and kind of like clean up the drawing before inking it. So I'll go around and like correct mistakes, add detail where it needs to be added. So it's really time consuming because it means pretty much everything that I draw is in a way drawn like three separate times. But I remember learning that at, at a young age, uh, there was uh, a comic book artist who worked for Marvel and he came he came to our school and he was drawing Nightcrawler and he had a light table and he put some tracing paper on it and he scribbled like a, just a weird abstract shape and then he put another piece of paper on it and he scribbled over that it was a little tighter and then he put another piece and he scribbled uh, you know you started to see legs and arms forming and he just he did that probably six or eight times and by the time he was done he had this like amazing image of Nightcrawler. It was, it was crazy. It was really cool to watch. 
but I think that was a, actually a really important lesson because it taught me that you shouldn't expect to throw a line the, the right way the, the first time. Um, in fact, trying to do that will end up making the drawing look stiff and uh, you'll also like play it safe all the time. You'll just draw things that you draw poses and things that you know you can handle. Hey Randy, what's up man? Randy, I love the cars you've been doing. I've, I've told you that before, but they're they're amazing. Um, and the fish, fishing cars. I'm sure you're probably totally sick of drawing them, but they they're amazing. I mean, you really found you really found your thing there. And I can imagine. Luckily, there's no shortage of people who like cars and like fish. So. All right, so these bullets, I just need to draw enough of the bullets so people get that it's bullets. Randy, you ought to think about uh, maybe you've already done this, but you ought to think about like contacting car magazines and uh, stuff like that, car enthusiast magazines, and just seeing if they'll like just put your artwork in there uh, and just get some free advertising out of that. I don't know if that would would do anything for you or not. Or do a story about you or something. Um, oh, I missed a question. So rain, uh, well, thanks for watching. How do you, how did you become a designer? Well, uh, so I graduated from, uh, from college in 2004. Uh, then I got a job as a in a vehicle graphics place as an artist, as a il the, the lead illustrator there. I say lead, but it was like the company was real small. It was four people, so uh, that's not that hard to do um, because I was the only illustrator there. And uh, I learned a ton of stuff from my boss because he used to work in the video game industry, and uh, he kind of taught me how to, like, really render stuff in Photoshop. And... Uh, uh, at that time, I was still drawing on paper and then scanning things in and then, um, you know, color inking them and coloring them in Photoshop. Actually, I think I would ink on paper, too, now that I think about it. Um, and after that, I got a job for a book publisher uh, for a long time, for about seven years. And then in 2012, I quit uh, to do freelancing full time. Um, and I've been doing that ever since. And that's been my favorite, so. Uh, so how did I become one? Um, it's just, it's what I've always done. Like, I, I just have always drawn, always, you know. So it's, I'm one of those lucky people where my job and my hobby are, are kind of the same thing. Um, so if you want to become an artist, just that's the easiest thing for anyone to do because you just sit down and you start drawing and and there you go. The end. Spending way too much time on this gun because I'm probably going to end up tracing a model anyway. All right, so, all right, let's do the Chupacabra. Um, I'm pretty happy with the Mexican dude. 
Uh, I like his mustache, but I just realized he looks a little too much like a skeleton, so I just want to draw some flesh. That's what's so great about working digitally is being able to, to quickly paint with white. Thank you. Um, I'm going to experiment with this sombrero. I don't think I like it. So when I want to try something new, I just I make a copy of the layer and just hide it and kind of try again. And on a new layer, if I don't like that either, then I can always go back to what I had. But I think I've got a bunch of sombreros open for reference, and they're all kind of different styles, which isn't really helping me. Yeah, I think that's better. But I think I like this style where it's much flatter and rounder. Flatter and rounder at the same time. Well, it doesn't make any sense. Let's put like a flower on it. And again, like uh, I'm just going to draw a rose thing in here. And it's only important that I draw something that the client sees as a rose. Because I'm still, once I get his approval, I'm going to uh, lower the opacity on all these lines and, uh, and draw over top of them anyway. So I'm just trying to get information down. Oh yeah, that's way better. All right, so I'm gonna start a new layer and work on the chupacabra, which is gonna be real tricky. trying to find the right pencil for for this here because the one I was using uh, is too thick for something that far in the background I think this will work um, Greg asks what books do you recommend to learn all the features of manga studio 5 uh, you know actually I don't I don't have any manga books I don't know if they're out there um, there's so much, uh, so much on YouTube where, when I first started using this program, um, it was three years ago, four years ago, gosh, maybe even longer. I, I can't remember, but when it, when I started using it, there actually weren't a lot of resources at all. Um, the only, they had some videos by, uh, the artist Doug Hills, who's very talented, 
and um, I think they commissioned him to do a bunch of walkthroughs. So I would recommend watching all of those. Um, I have some tutorials, but mainly, it, mainly it was so similar to Photoshop, and I, I was already like very very familiar with Photoshop that I really felt like there was no learning curve on this program. Um, in in fact, like for me, it just felt like photo. This did everything that I was wanted Photoshop to do. You know, so it was like Photoshop. It was set up like Photoshop, but it took it further. Um, so it's no secret that I I'm always talking about this program. I love it. So Chukacabra's got lots and lots and lots of little sharp crazy teeth. This was another tricky one because when I uh, when I was on a reference hunt for Chupacabra, there's so many different renditions of it, so which is actually kind of fun because it's not something that a lot of people are as familiar with, so we can kind of draw it how we want. And I'm going to try to draw it a little bit like, uh, if you're familiar with the Spawn comics, the Violator, like a little more a hairless demon type thing. R uh, Randy says that he hates inking like he's bad at it, but don't let him fool you. Hey, Fidel Castro is here. Man. Hey, Rob, what uh, what kind of artwork do you do? Actually, I don't think I realized that uh, that you do artwork. I uh, I think I assumed you were more of a graphic designer, um, or I shouldn't say not do artwork, but illustration. Yeah, it's really difficult to to abandon Photoshop completely. Um, I still pretty much everything that I draw, every project I work on, ends up in Photoshop in some capacity. You know, I spend almost all the time here in Manga Studio, but I still have to kind of do the final touches or or text layout or uh, color adjustments and things like that, and that's not really a, a slight against Manga Studio. It's just uh, Photoshop is so powerful, um, and because it's the standard, a lot of times you have to. You just can't avoid it, you know. So if you're looking for something to replace Photoshop completely, uh, 
if you're doing this as a full-time designer, that can be really tricky. Um, but luckily, since this program is so cheap, Manga Studio, I think, sometimes is on sale for only like 30 bucks. Um, you can have both without a, without a problem. Hey, I'll buy that uh, that 27 inch QHD if you if you don't use it. Um, although actually, so I almost bought it. And Randy, I know you have one. I don't, are you still watching? I'm not sure if you're still here. Um, but I saw that Wacom is coming out with uh, a new one in January or February. So I'm holding out for that. Uh, that's supposed to use their new like Wacom Pro 2 pen, which um, is on the Mobile Studio Pro and is a little more, they claim it's more accurate. Um, they claim there's less parallax and things like that. And I have a couple friends who use the, mo the new Mobile Studio and they say that there is a, a pretty significant difference. <laughs> Thanks, Alyssa. Yeah, I uh, I was thinking about that today. That um, I am going to eventually have to start drawing things other than zombies on these videos. Uh, I I actually do draw a lot of stuff that's not zombies and creatures and monsters. It just happens that because I enjoy doing it so much, I usually save those things for Friday. And Friday, I usually try to pick stuff. Uh, that is a little more low-key that I can just sit back and and draw without thinking too much um, So that's what we end up with Yeah, Rob. Uh, Rob comments on how how cheap Manga Studio is. Um, yeah, I I agree because Corel Painter, for example, uh, that pro that program has always been very expensive. I think it's five hundred dollars or or more maybe. Um, and I, I like Corel Painter, but I feel like this program does it does what Corel Painter does and more, um, and they're still selling it for, for really cheap. And uh, I hope they know what they're doing, because I want them to be in business for a long time. I'm sure they know what they're doing. By the way, I apologize for the terrible music. I, uh, I think I explained last time that. Uh, I'm making an effort to only use um, copyright free music because um, for Facebook, for example, they once heard me playing Iron Maiden in the background and they they took down the whole video and, and gave me a warning and uh, they're going to kidnap my family or something. So we're doing things legit now, but all... Most copyright free music kind of sucks. I have this preset so that I can switch back and forth really quickly between my like uh, detail pencil and then a shading pencil. Uh, so I can, because I realize like when I'm drawing on paper, I'll have a pen, but then I'll also have a marker like a brush pen with gray ink uh, or like a, uh, a Copic marker or something like that so I tried to mimic that as closely as I could all right so we got a giant chucabra 
And now I gotta draw a lady. Let's see, just a second. I have this, uh, I think I've shown this before, I have this little mannequin that I got from Dick Blick, and uh, it comes in handy all the time. Um, they, I'm sure you've seen those smaller ones, and I have those too. They're a lot more poseable, but they're just so tiny. Um, this one's not very poseable, but it's, it's plenty poseable to, uh, to just get the proportions right. Oops. Yeah, the body coon figures. Um, you got to be careful with those because there's, a, I'm sure you've read, there's a ton of bootlegs out there because they became so popular. Um, I might have gotten bootlegs. I'm not sure uh, because one of, one of my figures, the female, just fell apart when I opened up the box. Um, luckily, the company, re they refunded me and then didn't, asked me to send it back so I was able to glue it back together and uh, game the system a little bit but actually let me show you the figures <clears throat> so I know the lighting isn't great here but this is the body coon male I guess and then the female uh, the male is awesome. I use it all the time. This model of the female is worthless. Uh, she's way too tiny. Her proportions are just silly. Um, I know they made a newer model, and that's the one I want to get. This one, I don't remember which one it is, but don't bother. Uh, and they're not cheap. This guy, uh, I think it was like 40 bucks. So... So someone's making a lot of money on those. All right, so this is going to be a bride. And she is upset that this chupacabra has crashed her wedding. Yeah, right? It's the head. Like, the head on those body coon, the female figures, is just ridiculous. Now, I've seen, I, I can't recall what the name is, but I've seen a figure out there that is extremely posable. Uh, it's a woman, and it's like 400 bucks, um, which is a little too rich from my blood here because I got two kids and there's always something that they're breaking or I have to fix on them, you know. Uh, so I can't afford that. But if you have 400 bucks, please buy it and then tell me what it's like because the videos of it look amazing. So with this female too, uh, because I've already spent way too much time on this sketch, um, I am just going to do like a little stick figure drawing here. Oops. Yeah, right. Little flower on her hair. I'm trying to make her look like Salma Hayek and from uh, Dust Till Dawn. 
anybody remembers that movie. Yeah, right, Dutch Doodles. For, for 400 bucks, you could you could actually probably pay someone to just come over to your house every once in a while and pose for you. All right, so I'm probably going to only draw for uh, maybe... 10 more minutes here. Uh, so if anybody has any other, any other questions, I'd, I'd love to help you out. Just, um, just try to get them in quickly here. All right, so let's zoom out and take a look at this. So we've got the bride, we've got the chupacabra, we've got the zombie bandito, and I have to draw, let's see, we're gonna put a chupacabra up in the sky. I assume they fly, I mean, they have wings. Um, I haven't seen a documentary on chupacabras yet. We just watched something on Netflix with, or about a, a guy who claims to, be a, to have been abducted by aliens. Um, you would know him, he's made all these, he made this video of an alien, like, peeking in into his window and it looked ridiculous like it looks like a puppet I'm sure you've seen it um, but it was it's worth watching for the laughs all right so let's go back to the chupacabra Maybe what I'll try to do for uh, like next week's live stream, um, maybe I'll try to ink this so that way you get to kind of see the progression. Or if I end up inking it before then, um, I'll I'll have the file open maybe and, and show you how it's going. Because again, I said at the beginning, this is going to be a one or I mean a two to three color t-shirt job. So or it's going to be pretty challenging to have all these different things going on and render it with only that amount of colors. So it's essentially going to be almost a black and white drawing. Uh, and before I close here, if um, if anybody has any suggestions for new Manga Studio brushes, just just leave them in the comments because I'm finishing up a new set. Uh, I have a bunch of brushes available on my website, um, and I try to release a new set every year. And I've got I think I have some cool stuff, a lot of patterns and like special effects brushes, but I need some ideas. Um, because I think I've already, in my two sets already, uh, I've already covered pencils and inks and stuff like that. So I don't want to keep inundating people with those. So any suggestions would definitely help. Yeah, texture brushes. Uh, what, what kind of textures... I have some fabric brushes that I've been using a lot uh, in the next set. Um, I've got like bricks and stones and that kind of stuff too, which is handy sometimes. 
All right, so then do some clouds. And I should have turned off this blue line a long time ago. All right, so this is the sketch that I would send to my client. And I, I probably actually spent a lot more time on this than I normally would. Uh, it's just, it was fun to draw and uh, I draw a little slower when, when we're live. But um, we got the zombie bandito, bandolier, chupacabra, Mexican bride. This will be a cool like Mexican carpet. Um, we have tons of text to add, which is kind of a bummer, but uh, there it is. This is actually, this text is supposed to be bent. And you can, you can bend stuff really easily in Manga Studio. By doing the mesh warp tool. So I'm gonna change the points to like here. Now it doesn't work quite as well as, as the Photoshop arc, as you can see, but just for the sketch, it's enough. Yeah, skin textures actually would be a good idea. Um, because I don't, I don't actually use those in my art, but I really should because I, I've noticed that a lot of times that's something that really pushes the artwork over the edge um, in a good way. It's just to paint, you know, paint people and then run a, a quick texture over the top for their skin because skin is so, you know, irregular. But, okay, cool. So I'm, I'm happy with this design. And I'm pretty sure the client will like it too because he's a pretty easygoing guy. Um, yeah, uh, and I really, really appreciate everybody who was watching and questions. Um, if, if you use Manga Studio, I've got a bunch of brushes on my website and stickers and prints and stuff, and I will be back next Friday. So thanks a lot.